as some of your uh, listeners may be aware of memory reconsolidation, you'll recognize that the two necessary components for memory reconsolidation to be launched have been activated. We've activated the the distress neural pathways through the initial setup of the session, getting them to reveal to me the worst part of the memory, the visual aspect that goes with that, the negative thoughts and beliefs about themselves, the emotion that goes with that, and the physiological state that goes with that distress pathway that's been fully reactivated. We've spent quite a bit of time um, revealing that, so the bilateral simulation tends to bring all that up with more intensity. That's been really quite well reactivated. And then at some point, either they spontaneously, um, what comes up for them when we're doing the bilateral stimulation is some kind of experience which stands in sharp contradiction to the what's been reactivated in the distress neural pathways, or I will engineer that through doing the inner child resourcing. And the person is able to then experience a very different kind of emotional state. find yourself using experiential frameworks and techniques in your work with clients? Well, look, as you said in, my, in your introduction, probably for about the last 15 years or so, I've been working primarily with EMDR. And uh, I view that as being inherently experiential in that when we're conducting an EMDR session, we're dealing with the, the lived experience that a person has in that moment primarily in relation to memories, but the memories are something which is reactivated in the present moment during the therapy session. So in EMDR, we're working with the person's, like I said, memories, which is really just a symbolic representation of the experiences that, that they had in the past. And we very deliberately reactivate the neural pathways relating to those memories, which brings in the um, the visual aspect of what was going on for the person at the time, the emotional aspect, the sometimes the auditory aspect, sometimes the olfactory aspect of it, and most certainly the physiological aspect of, of the, the memory as well. So that when we're working with uh, something that happened a long time ago for the person, we've reactivated all those aspects of their experience and all those aspects are well and truly present in the therapy. So I'd say EMDR is well and truly able to be considered an experiential therapy. Yeah. 